Hello everyone, welcome to the website Cash Investment. Today in this video, let's quickly go over the Web3 Foundation testifies on digital assets recognition before the US House of Representatives. So I think this is the biggest news today for the Parkdot ecosystem. Uh, and uh, I personally joined and watched the video. It's quite long actually, three or four hours. Uh, so I'm going to quickly go over uh, some summaries and uh, we'll also show you the important speech from the Web3 Foundation. And so first of all, Daniel Schoenberger, who is a chief legal officer at Web3 Foundation, was invited to present Parkdot and the Web3 vision. Uh, and uh, he highlighted the Web3 aims to return control of data to users making the internet more decentralized, secure, and user-centric, uh, and also introduce the uh, node makers to Polkadot as next-generation blockchain protocol. Uh, he also highlighted the benefits of Web3 technology that can provide a more secure and uh, transparent social media apps, uh, and uh, especially one of the case I think he mentioned is uh, decentralized social media me way uh, which is a social network with 20 million members focus on user privacy um, and uh, finally he explained the detail of the uh, regulatory process web3 foundation undertook regarding the classification of dot uh, and i think this is the most important part most of us are, are, are interested to know whether the SEC they are going to agree with uh, the thought as a software and um, so in the today's uh, talk um, I think he did pretty good job and uh, explained the process of launch and decentralization um, by which control over the Parkdown networks was handed over to community on both a technical and the governance level. And so the general idea is they start with uh, um, start as uh, security. Um, at the beginning, it's a security, and uh, and then like later on, uh, the thought is fully decentralized knowledge. So it's kind of a step by step process, and uh, he wants the SEC to separate them. Uh, at some point, can consider the thought as a software instead of the security. So he also uh, mentioned the current regulatory approach has held back innovation in the Web3 space and uh, talk about the two primary obstacles. All right, now the rest of the video, let's just enjoy the most important part from the talk. And I will post a link for the whole video of the talk. So if you are interested, you can check it by yourself. Enjoy. German McHenry, German Thompson, German Hill, German Johnson, and Ranking Member Waters, Ranking Member Scott, Ranking Member Lynch, Ranking Member Caraveo, and other members uh, of the committees. On behalf of the Web3 Foundation and the Polkadot ecosystem, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to testify today regarding blockchain technology and the benefits of Web3. I am Daniel Schoenberger, the Chief Legal Officer at the Web3 Foundation, and I've worked at the intersection of emerging technologies, law, ethics, and public policy for more than 20 years. The Web3 Foundation was formed with the goal of establishing Web3, a new and better internet infrastructure. It wasn't about building a currency like Bitcoin or a smart contract platform like Ethereum. It was about giving siloed blockchains the ability to communicate with each other and to realize this vision the Polkadot network was built. Now think of Polkadot as the SMTP protocol of the internet used to send and receive email and think of layer one blockchains such as Bitcoin or Ethereum as email providers like Yahoo or Google. Polkadot allows these distinct programs to communicate with a seamless connection and interoperability. Without this infrastructure, this would not be possible. The native token of the Polkadot network is a blockchain-based token known as DOT, D-O-T that is. It should be thought of as the orchestrating tool used to secure and govern Polkadot. 
to facilitate the creation of this ecosystem, a future DOT token was sold in private sales from 2017 to 2019. The Foundation treated DOT as a security in accordance with Regulation S and D, and the Foundation confirmed the identity of the original buyers through KYC and AML checks. After three years of engagement with SEC staff, the Foundation believes DOT is no longer a security based on the Howey test. DOT also satisfies the factors indicating a token is less likely to be a security, as set out in the Framework for Investment Contract Analysis of Digital Assets, as it was issued by the SEC Strategic Hub for Innovation in Financial Technology, FinHub. Given DOT's functionalities and properties, the Foundation thinks of DOT as merely coordinating software. The Foundation suggests putting DOT in a separate category, for example, a class of utility tokens. The most important regulatory concern for the Foundation is the classification of tokens. Both Switzerland and the Euro European Union have created a clear framework distinguishing between payment tokens, security tokens and utility tokens. Under the current US regulatory approach, a token is forced to fit into limited categories. However, it is not always clear in which category a token should be placed. As a simple example, the chair I'm sitting in could be tokenized. Also, there will be some tokens that will have the characteristics of a particular asset class and at a time in the future will cease to have those characteristics. This is part of the nature and innovation of blockchain technology. Clearly, a legislative process to re-evaluate a token is necessary. The SEC staff has already outlined a path to evaluate the status of a digital token. The Foundation suggests that Congress establish a procedure through legislation to authorize regulators to re-evaluate the status of tokens. Let me be very clear. If a token is used for fundraising purposes, it should be subject to all applicable laws and regulations. However, that same token may serve a functional purpose devoid of speculative investment in the future. We fully support putting into place a legally binding process of token reclassification. And we applaud the subcommittees for undertaking the hard work and deliberation necessary to develop a legislative framework. We would ask you do so with the understanding an approach that recognizes new technologies. To simply apply existing regulation would be inadequate to truly address this emerging technology. We look forward to helping the committees develop a comprehensive framework for all token classification in the US and our confidence that with clear statutory guidelines, the US will continue to lead the world in innovation. I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you very much.